Well, hello, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. We're coming toward the end of the entire series. I have this head that I'm going to do, uh, the tall one. We're going to figure out what to do with her. I think she's going to become just a painted marvel. And then this one is going to be something uh, I'm not sure what else. We'll figure out with him, and then um, I'm going to do one of the sculpt crate. Um, maybe one, two, or three. I do have, oh, I have two other heads over there, so maybe three of them. I know I keep threatening to do that, but we're almost done here. This um, beautiful, creepy lady with the white eyes, uh, she almost looks like Storm. Oh, there we go, X-Men Storm. So I am proceeding to... Well, I'm continuing to take the brains out of the head. Um, I need to get the whole cavity emptied out. So I'm using whatever I can here to do that. And my hands seem to be working very well for most of it. The edges are really tough to get out. So you got to sort of use what you can and what you got around you. Um, and I do want to be careful, as I've mentioned in the past, because she's already painted. Yes, I did it completely out of order. Since she's already painted, I have to be careful not to um, squeeze too much around here because the paint does not flex with the rubber that is her skin. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. And that's a lesson I have learned for any of these that I end up doing. So I did want to mention something. If you have a hankering for a head, <laughs> uh, that has been turned into oh, a uh, planter, these could be for sale. Oh yeah, I just said that. Um, you can message me and you know, let's talk if you want one. I could also do it, you know, just like I do with my paintings. I could do a custom order, just like I do with my retro tote bags. I could do a custom order if you want a certain type of head. Um, and we could talk about price. You've seen how some of them are, they don't take a lot of time. And then others, I spend a lot of time on them as you've experienced with me. Oh, that's an ear. Oh, that's an ear hole. All right. Um, so depending on what you wanted, Hell, I would do that. I think that would be fun. So um, you could have it for next year or for the spring or for a fabulous party that you may have coming up or to um, to display on your nightstand. Whatever you want to do with it, I'm not going to judge. I'll just make a face at you. As Shanine says, my sister Shanine, she's always just like, oh, no, you're not judging. You're just making faces at me. I'm like, uh, well, it, I'm not saying anything that's judgy. You do you. You do however you need to do. Um, this is hard to get out in the front. So uh, anyway, that's an idea for you, right? Why not? Make your own or let me know and I'll make one for you. That could be fun. Actually, I know it would be fun. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that was exciting. Big old chunks coming out of her head. Um, all right, so this is getting better and better and better. There is that weird plastic cup thing that I always mention in here that is really hard to dig out. Oh my gosh, wow. Ooh, careful not to squish your head. Um, I know that sounds very strange, but I don't want to squish all the good paint off of her head. Uh, let's continue digging out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I have my drill bit with me right here. I'm going to drill down the center of the neck. Uh, I am finding with the other pots that, um, or the other planter heads, head planters, mannequin head planters. There we go. There's, that's what the term is that um, I really do need a lot of space. So um, Manny, or not Manny, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, wait, wait. Basil with basil in his head. The basil is not getting enough water because of the way he's cut, because of the lack of space inside his head. The cavity, <laughs> the open 
head cavity. The cranial space is not large enough to hold a lot of water. And when it gets hot, like we've had a hot summer, um, this is weird. It's like not even being in, you know, in Connecticut. It's Connecticut isn't New England in general. I mean, yeah, we're in the south, the deep south of um, New England, but it's not usually this hot for this prolonged period of time. So although it's been starting to cool off, which is very nice and refreshing, it's gorgeous when it's in the 60s in the morning. It's like, oh yeah, this is the kind of weather I love. Um, but anyway, so when it gets really hot, it really, they dry out very, very fast. So they, um, they need a lot of watering because I've got sun plants in them. If you've got herbs, they need to be in the sun. Uh, I do have chives in, that I'm about to put in one of them. Um, and I got to figure out which one that's going to be, but it may be basil or actually maybe her. That's this. She would be very cool with um, the chives growing out of her head. All right. So we're getting close here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much there. I have no idea what the heck I did with my my scraper thing that I had here. Let's use it. Well, yeah, it's a bummer. But I do have... I do not have the drill and the drill bit. Hey, Larry. Why? So Larry's over on the other side and he's doing Lego. Ooh, yay. He's doing a Batmobile. Um, do you know where the drill is? That's right here on the counter. Oh, it's there on the counter. Okay, cool. I got to see if I can find the drill bit. The giant drill bit, which I thought I kept over here. But I don't think I did. So there's this big ass, big old thing in the center in here. Ah, this one's different than the others. This is really bizarre. It doesn't have that cup. I thought it was the cup with the foam stuff. You know, the liquids when you put the liquids together and the one, two, kaboom. One part, two parts. One's an activator, I think, for the other or whatever it is. It creates a creates the cool soft foam um, that expands into the space but um, it's not a cup in here it is something else in there it's like a center column and it's connected to the bottom let me take her off of this and I'll show you look at that see that sticking up in the middle now that's pretty well cleaned out right I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty. I don't care if it, how it looks. It's just a matter of, is it going to hold a lot of soil? But that center column is disconcerting. So I wonder if it goes all the way up and through. So this must be a different manufacturer or just a different style. I bet you it's a different manufacturer. There is this rubber center part here that's for holding on to the brace that I have. Now, as I mentioned, I keep mentioning, I gotta be careful, and I'm reminding myself as much as telling you, gotta really be careful to not squish your head because the paint will not do well if I do that. So I'm going to need to, so that's like a black hole, right? I can't even see down there. I have no idea what's down there. Uh, this has been put together. The bottom is very well stuck, not gonna come off. Got a rubber seat. Oh, there I see it. There's a plug in the bottom that I'm going to need to drill through. All right, so she is cleaned and cleared. And I think in the next episode, what I'm going to do is I will, um, I'm going to spend 10 minutes today uh, painting. And then I am going to, in the next episode, have the drill and I will drill through, get her all cleaned out, finish her up, finish her eyes. Um, we can work on her eyes a little bit today. And I want them to be creepy and otherworldly. And therefore, I already used the um, white in there. And that's the base for any other color that I use on her eyes. I'm just going to put a little bit of the, oh my gosh, bronze. Which I just got them all over my finger. Whoops, sorry. I'm missing you. Bronze. I don't know if you can see that at all. There it is. And... Um, paint all over my fingers. Oh, that worked. And then I'm going to put orange, orange as well. 
And I may put a little black dot in the middle. I don't know. I don't want to black out her eyes because I don't think you'd even notice. There we go. Just a little bit splop. This is Pumpkin Patch. It's one of my favorite colors. It's that sort of burnt orange, pumpkin-y orange. Grab a paintbrush from my giant stash of paintbrushes. Uh, there's a nice little one. Very good. And I want something with an even finer tip. And... Uh, give me one second here. There it is. Ah! Being buried there. Found it. So the two brushes I've got, one with flat tip, ta-da, one with the finer tip that when it gets down it'll be less fluffy. And I am gonna go with use orange around here. I'm gonna leave the or maybe I'll do orange as the whites and then the gold in the center. That's pretty cool. See how Let's see how, oh yeah, specific I can be. Oh, that's good. Yeah, putting that white underneath definitely makes this orange really show up better. And pop, pop, if you will, pops, a pop of color. My God, that term is so funny that that term came to be during all the, um, oh, and her hair is so dusty, it's going to make me sneeze um, during the, you know, the early days. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah. Early. <laughs> Sorry. Er oh, Lordy. Early days of um, like HGTV uh, with all the design shows, you know, and then in there you have to have a pop of color. Everything was pop this or that color really pops. Um, clothing design and that makes it really pop and it got to be just like a, the word it's the term itself got to be somewhat of a joke of people saying it um and everybody i know were just like oh god when is this word going to go out of fashion and i still hear it periodically on those design shows make sure i'm in the light there we go give her the nice Creepy, creepy, creepy orange rimmed eyeballs. There we go. Nothing like a little otherworldly orange rimming of the eyes. Do, 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 do. There we go. Yeah, so that term, people still use it periodically. I find myself using it periodically. A little pop of color. Because, I mean, it's, it's actually... <laughs> unfortunately a, a actual good descriptor and what's funny is i think like the youngest younger youngest generation adult generation probably hasn't even heard it very much it's probably like an old people term now i'm 52 so it's, i'm an old person apparently i discovered that the other day and um and somebody i was talking to it really had no idea about half of what I was talking about. So I'm definitely not a young demographic. But in that, I think the word and the term may come back to use. Um, oh, there we go. All right, it's a pop. It's a pop of orange in there. <laughs> so now in the centers, I'm going to use that bronze, a beautiful bronze. I'm going to have to put it on really goopy because it is pretty translucent. Transparent, whatever you want to call it. Um, See-through. Not sure about my words on that one. You know, it's like when you read words so many times, ooh, that's cool. Yeah, the metallic is going to show up nicely. And then you go to use them and you're like, wait, 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 is that correct? Um, ooh, just got some space for extra color under there. So I'm loading up the brush heavy splopping it on and using so i'm doing this instead of this not wiping it on as much as i'm dabbing it on so that it stays in place and if i find that i'm pulling the paint back off i reload my brush and 
dab it back on. There we go. That's better. Now, the other eye, I'm going to do the same thing. It's still, I got to put it on real heavy so that it will read as that color. This way, it'll have a more, consist more consistent, ew, got hair in our eye. Um, look to it. It'll look less painty as much as, oh, come on. Come on, sister. Get your hair out of your eyeballs. That's just not right. There we go. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. There you are. Hello. I'm going to try to get it down in all the nooks and crannies. There's these, the eyes on this one are really beautifully formed. Um, they're really cool. Like the Oddly enough, the center parts, to really give them, you know, sort of a look, I guess, if you will, it's something, they're pointed, they're almost conical, they're almost like a cone that comes out to a point, but they are pointed in the center, so I think that whatever brand this is really, really did it up hardcore, it's pretty cool. Um... I was looking online as to how much I actually spent on this specific one. I did a lot of shopping for them and found them from a bunch of different sources, including one of them, and I normally don't shop there. Uh, Walmart, of all places, um, had a couple of these at really good prices, and I was like, do I do it? Do I go ahead and shop at Walmart? I don't like what Walmart did to many, many, many cities around the country, including Shrewsbury, including Rutland, I mean. They just come in and destroy all the all the small businesses in the area. But anyway, whatever. That's a political whatever. Um, it's not a political. It's a consumerism whatever. But anyway, so I I did end up ordering. I know. I can poo poo them until it's inconvenient. Also, they actually had styles that were a little different than I had seen anywhere. It wasn't only the price. There we go. There we go. Very cool. So, there are her eyes. Oh, I hadn't looked at them in the screen. I only looked at them very close up. So, I've got my... Oh, jeez. Her hair gets all over. Eh. Uh, I got my water. Rinsing, 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 rinsing. So one thing as you're cleaning your brushes, as you will know if you are a painter, and you will not know if you are not a painter, is the one of the most important places to get paint out of. The ends come out easily. The base where they attach and go into the actual paint brush. It's extremely important not to smash your brush in too hard. If you lay it down, so that it's doing this, in it instead of going it's going to happen is if you go straight in the bristles go and then they they don't bend it well they bend but they bend bend like this so then you have a brush that's like this if you lay it in and you press down sideways they bend all together and then they stay this pretty pretty shape right turn it turn it turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. i'm rotating rotate 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 as i go in the water and that makes sure that i can get the bar bristles at the butt base clean as well. Because the more paint you get in there, the more goopy they get and the wider they spread. Now this is for all of your brushes. This is if you're painting on the inside of a house and you've got a, you know, a wall brush, a trim brush, blah, 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 outside of your house, blah, 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 blah. Paint brushes in general. Things that screw up paint brushes is not getting the paint out of where the br bristles go into the handle. And a lot of people, they just jam it in and when I say a lot of people, it's just because I've seen people doing it all over uh, throughout my many, many eons of, um, <laughs> feels like it sometimes, uh, of painting. But also, to you'll notice I always grab from the bottom and I pull. What that's going to do is just going to smush any of the paint that's, because if you're painting for quite a while, it, it will dry. You're going to smush it, get it wet get it broken up a little bit then when you go in you'll be amazed that there'll be more paint coming out of the base of the bristles go in squeeze it pull it out just squeegee it out you don't squeeze it so hard that you're pulling out the bristles 
And if you do that just a couple of times, you'll be amazed. It also makes it so you're not dripping water all over your surfaces. You'll be amazed that your brushes will last a long time. They may, the pigment that's in the paint, depending what kind of paint it is, may color, discolor the, not discolor, but just color the base of those bristles in there. But who cares if the color's in there as long as you do it until it's pretty much clear. Now, how obsessive do you need to be on that? Well, there are, there are brushes that are expensive out there. I use cheap brushes because this is what I do. Um, on my big paintings, I actually use nice paint brushes that you get like at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that or True Value. Um, but I use nicer ones because they have a finer, um, finer bristles. Now, if I am doing a piece where I'm just covering it, I will use one that has a little bit rougher. But the problem is when you have rougher, if you don't want to be scratching your paint off or scraping your paint off while you're trying to put paint on, you're working against yourself. Also, if you have brushes that are too soft, uh, that are made for like, um, oh, say if you're using something, a, a brush that's meant to be used with very, very light uh, stain, look at what the brushes, brushes are intended for if you use like a one inch or a two inch brush. The stain brushes will be very soft. The bristles will be very, very flexible and they'll be finer. Now that is because um, stains and clear coats and things like that are much thinner. They're not as goopy as a wall paint or a trim paint. And with that, that finer will put on a better coat. It won't be scraping it off as it's putting it on. You, it always will, but it's easier to apply. So those brushes actually can be used as well stylistically, depending on what you're doing on a section of your house. But if you try to use that on, you know, for painting a general wall, it's just going to be flopping the whole time. You want something with a little bit of firmness. And the more you use brushes, just like with these, like I told you, the synthetic press bristles are usually with a light paint like this, especially a very thin version of acrylic paint. Uh, it's much easier to use. I may use a stiffer bristle, natural bristle with oils, definitely, or with the, um, the more expensive, the higher end, like the Windsor Newton. It's not high end necessarily, but it's, it's goopier. It's much thicker than like the basics or uh, from Liquitex or something like that. But if you use a finer, nicer, thicker paint, you want a lot of times a firmer bristle on your brush. That way you can control the paint a little bit better and you can determine if you're scraping it off or if you're putting it on instead of it just going and smearing, right? So talked about that before, but I didn't get that in depth to it. So there we go. She is all set for today. Her eyes are good to go. I'm gonna pull her up and show her to you closer and tap on your screen. Oh, there she is. That's pretty cool. Not too creepy, but creepy enough, right? <laughs> I'm not doing anything with the bottom. I like the paint. I like it a lot. We'll see what we do actually with her hair. I like it down, but we may put it up just so that she's more manageable uh, or do a couple braids just around the front to bring them across the back like we did on the um, the Wonder Woman girl or whatever she is, the Supergirl type of one. And if we bring them maybe from the temples, actually, if we bring it from the temples, bring it back, it'll get it off of her face. We still have the fabulous long hair. Gives her this great look in the front. Because when I spray painted her, it actually pushed the hair back. So, and then we could leave it or we can braid it. I may do like little braids all the way through. It would be kind of cool. Just lower braids. All right, so we'll figure that out in future episodes and the next episode is going to be me drilling from the bottom and doing something with the hair i'll play with her hair in between see what i like and then i'll actually do the process on then probably the next episode all right so this is shorty not so short 24 minutes but i hope you enjoyed she's looking uh, looking cool i love the effect of the paint have a great day Spread some love out there. There's not enough love in the world, Sir Elton John. Thank you for that. And um, just treat yourself well, okay? Oh, subscribe and like and send to your friends. Who knows? The other thing is, remember, 
you don't have to watch this, and I'm telling you this now. I should tell you this at the beginning of every episode. Maybe from here on out, I will. You don't have to watch this on regular speed. YouTube, in case you're not a YouTube aficionado, aficionado, YouTube has different speed playback settings. So I watch it on 1.25 if I have audio on, but I put the, the closed captions. I've enabled closed captions. Turn on the closed captions, put it on 1.5, and watch me blah, 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 away. And see how fast you can read. Um, or just listen to it, and I sometimes That's what I kind of sound like when I'm on 1.5. It's kind of funny. But at least then you can get through an episode pretty quickly. Uh, or watch it at regular speed and have coffee with me in the morning. Hi, Terry. Love you. That's my sister. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.